not that long ago talking to someone who is on the other side of the planet through a video call seemed impossible, almost a fantasy belonging to sci-fi. We are still digesting these experiences and yet they've started to become a reality living, a digital world through an avatar. Through this avatar we feel the touch of a loved one, the smell of a delicious dish or we can also jump off a cliff. This and much more is what we want to achieve with the metaverse, the most immersive experience in the digital universe. Metaverse or meta-universe, which means meta plus universe, is a concept that will define the next generation of the internet. It describes a multi-sense immersive experience applied through different technology and de devices and the internet. In this new space of the innovative teaching group Di Paso, led by Marta Lora Tamayo from Administrative Law and Antonio López Peláez, a professor of social work and social services, they are going to get into this digital experience and talk about the link between the metaverse and participation, which is basically what the whole series revolves around. Welcome to this new program of this series of the participatory group about participation led by Marta Lora Tamayo and uh, I know we've done many programs already. Today we wanted to talk to all of you about a topic that concerns us in line with the programs about participation. We always talk about urban participation, public participation, but in this case we wanted to talk about a new space, a new era ahead of us which is participation in the metaverse. And with whom are we going to talk about this? Marta Lora Tamayo, who is here with me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening at UNED. We always want to think about our listeners to provide you with the best debate space. And secondly, Chaime Marcuello on the phone from Zaragoza. Hello, it's a pleasure to be with all of you and with those listening later. He's a Cybernetic Association of the UK fellow. He's extremely relevant and he's probably the ideal person to talk to about the new dynamic of participation. Today we are going to debate about participation and the metaverse. So any of you listening might ask us what the metaverse even is. It's a new possibility on the internet. It's a new immersive space of a virtual world. We will be able to join through different devices that allow us to feel as though we are there. Many scientists have said that in the following years there'll be a new microchip on our heads, that Google and Facebook are all working together, there are Zara collections in the metaverse, but it's more about an immersive experience. You will have that sensory capabilities and anyone listening might be thinking, what do Marta Lora and Antonio Lopez what do they know about metaverse? They normally talk about public policy and participation, but it's because part of our reality will be lived in the metaverse. If we were talking about social media 20 years ago, you might have a different point of view, but this will be the same thing. With this new technology transition, there's so much at stake, and that's why investment in this virtual world is huge. This Metaverse will define our day-to-day -day real lives. But if you don't believe me, think about how often you use your phone every day and for how long, three, four hours a day. Many of our students say that it's easier to change your boyfriend or girlfriend than your phone because it's part of your identity. So I just wanted to give you the context about the metaverse. We want to create a program that is fun, entertaining, interesting, but to talk about a topic that is groundbreaking, we like to think in a, an open-minded way and to think about different problems. The metaverse and its link to participation, I mean, I don't know if any other radio program has dealt with this topic before, but we're talking about a new paradigm that we will be entering without even realizing in the following years. Chaime, what do you think? There are many different points of view. Your introduction has been very interesting. There's a lot to read about this and there's a lot to invent. 
Still, metaverse is a word that needs to be explained. It's a combination of the prefix meta, which means more or further than it's an objective, but universe means that this metaverse will become something that is there, but it's it's actually a natural evolution of a communication way. It's also a strategy. Facebook to clean its reputation. Mark Zuckerberg has very skillfully changed his uh, approach. On the 28th of October, he decided that Facebook would be called Meta Platforms and Corporate, thus creating a machinery that works around the metaverse financially. Antonio, please interrupt me if I dwell on topics for too long, but the metaverse is a topic that has been there for a long time for people who are involved in these kinds of issues. The first time that they heard this concept was in Neil Stephenson's 1952 novel Snow Crush. It's a sci-fi novel. And Stephenson defined the metaverse as an atmosphere and environment that is parallel and digital, parallel to the physical world, I mean. Now we know that there are many things happening in a virtual world, a digital world, tech world, and the metaverse is simply not a new reality because it already exists, but another dimension of reality that, as my wife says, everybody lives in their piece of reality, and now reality will be taking place before a screen, a TV screen, a mobile phone screen, but here we are combining different devices. How interesting what you're saying. I think that the metaverse is a new socialization space, a new dimension, but it will be decisive for everyone because we will be able to feel, to live, to check, to act. We might only reproduce our species in the real world, but there's a general concern. How can, I mean, I have a very ambitious concern, I think Marta shares this, but how can we conquer the democracy and participatory world in the metaverse? Well, the first thing you need to understand before even how to democratically make use of these spaces is to understand how these spaces exist. The metaverse is a symbolic space, it's also practical, it has buttons, it has consequences, and it's generated through computers. Computers connected between them and with different communication procedures. So it's a virtual collective space. It's a space that can also be perceived as an extension of reality. It's also a space for augmented reality, mixed reality, virtual reality. The name is not accurate 100%, but we imagine that when one enters one's home, we can actually order a robot to open the windows, turn on the thermostat. It's basically about devices interacting with each other. There will be a huge impact in terms of banking and public administrations too. So as citizens, how can we make the most of these spaces and also the other way around? How can we make these technologies led by computers not turn us into their slaves instead of citizens. We are between George Orwell's 1984, but also a new order of citizenship. Instead of entering a cave, we just want to live better. The purpose of technology is not to make us more submissive, but to free us from the paradigm of having to earn our money through work. So how can we understand the production of these spaces generated by computers and what happens within the metaverse where there will be new elements that always exist because of your condition, the difference between space and time. Here, space dilutes, but time is the same. Human time is limited by hours. We don't know how much we will live, but it's limited. We have 24 hours a day, but there's a breakage with physical reality, with being able to touch a table, to talk to others. But nowadays we are talking now, but people can listen to the recording later. Our listeners need to know 
that Jaime has 26 hours a day because he's such a hard-working man. Marta, what do you think? Jaime, thank you so, so much for this approach. I've been silent because I was taking notes, thinking about your clear vision of the metaverse, but I have two doubts that our listeners might share with me. I don't know. On the one hand, I'm trying to forecast, imagine what this new space looks like. As a mother, I imagine my children playing PlayStation, so I think about the metaverse as a new progression of this instead of headset you're wearing the sort of goggles but uh, when we're talking about interconnection of devices i might have a more clear vision of what it is but it's going to be very important and it's going to impact our interaction with banks i mean banks have a lot at stake but public administrations you mentioned it as an example and as a person involved in public administrations, I need to tell the difference. Banks are not public administrations. Law 36, 2015, administrative procedures are going to make a difference. I am skeptical due to my lack of ability to visualize the possibilities behind this new reality that isn't new, as you were saying, but also how it will actually and really allow us to interact in a more agile, dynamic, efficient way or even participate together with public administrations. And I'm saying together with for a reason. The traditional design of administrative processes, which is what I explain to my students this semester, transforms, turns into something new. Is it possible to make administrations more dynamic through the metaverse? Is it possible to have civil servants interact with people asking for grants, subsidies, aid, whatever? Can this really happen? Because it requires a lot of training, both for public administrations themselves and citizens. So where do we stand? What is the current stage? I mean, I find myself so far away from all of this as a civil servant myself, but also as a citizen. I have learned all technologies come with accidents. That's a Paul Vidilio quote. This is a technological space. But so was registries and interactions defined now in bureaucracy. So let me give you an anecdote. In order to register our association about research related to Down syndrome, in order to transfer our new activity license, since we needed educational activity permissions, in the town hall here, at the end of the process, I had to interact with a device that told me, your current version does not enable this step. We're talking about interacting with machines that are very sophisticated. You can even talk to them. But we are years away from this reality. I don't know if I'm diverting from the topic, but the opportunities facilitated by these technologies are amazing. Mark Zuckerberg wouldn't have invested as much if he didn't see this as a potential amazing business. Pioneers always make a lot of money compared to those coming behind them. We don't need to put technology at the center, but citizens at the center. It's a space that is parallel to physical world with my feet on the ground. Internet has facilitated, however, many different things. If you are in the street without a radio antenna, you can't listen to this radio show. But here, if you are in the street, 5G mobile phones allow you to do certain things. There's a new opportunity space, but this comes with some shadowy space. 
Many things can go well, but there are many hazards related to oversight, exploitation, control, domination. So we need engineers and tech people to work together with those people in social sciences to make codes easier. Engineers might make a decision that is in conflict with personal data regulations. Yes, but Marta's question is very important because right now there's already a digital economy in the metaverse you can buy and sell. Yes, there's already been a sale of a boat and you can have many problems when buying and selling products. When your digital rights are there, I mean, how can our leaders exercise citizens' personal data rights in the metaverse? As citizens, not only as clients, how can we create participation spaces? If I reproduce the city of Madrid in the metaverse, if I'm going places, buying, selling, if I need to enter spaces with a certification, a permission, etc., how can I create opportunity spaces? One of the problems is defining the metaverse as a private space. Socialization spaces imply opportunities and risks for citizens, so there needs to be a mediation concerning administrations to protect these rights. So how can we, I mean, I'm thinking about it right now, if we had to organize a pilot metaverse experience in the Madrid City Council with our participatory group, how could we do this? Could we enter spaces reproducing cities, a space of participation? I mean, what sort of permissions do you need? How do you function? How do you sell? How do you buy? So this space needs to be controlled by public spaces. For instance, China has forbidden the use of Bitcoin. Yes, but Bitcoin is forbidden in China because they cannot control it. Sorry for interrupting. What I see is that the metaverse is advancing really quickly, especially on the side of private companies, gaming. But if the logic is making things easier, supporting and serving our citizens, this logic comes with imposing, dominating, exploiting. That's the risk. So if administrations are in good hands and technology is serving a good purpose, fantastic. But we need to be alert. There are many risks attached, as demonstrated by many sci-fi novels from the last century. So the Madrid City Council should firstly, and this will require a lot of work, especially from social workers, is to create digital mediators. People need to read instructions and they don't. So you might go to a, an administration Physically asking people for help is the only solution. I had a hardware problem, so I needed help physically. So there are many different elements. You are working on citizen participation and advanced models for the 21st century. So one of the first things you need to do is to say, OK, let's facilitate things. But what if I don't have a mobile phone, as is the case for many people? How do I interact with the City Council of Madrid? What other devices can I use? How can I solve this? And how can we rethink in a more systematic manner issues related to digital rights and citizen rights who, which need to be at the center? Because what we don't want is to create accidents through the use of too much technology. Of course, for those who are outside, it's a problem. But for those who are inside, you also need a digital mediator for all these kinds of activities, education-wise too. As citizens, we need to enter this space, not as clients, but citizens. If cities, if town halls, create different interactive experiences in the metaverse, we also need to take into account the consequences that me this might have on people's lives and health, the, co the economy, etc. But also tangible consequences in the physical world. What an interesting topic. What are the dimensions for citizens and cities in the metaverse? Thinking about participation of cities in the metaverse. Marta, I think that we could maybe create another program about this topic. What is your perception, Marta? I have a lack of knowledge that I need to recognize, 
but there, I also have a lot of curiosity. And my feeling is that I already belong to a generation in which this comes a bit too late. I don't know if you also feel too old for this. No, Chaime is younger than us. But also, as Chaime was saying, and rightfully so, we need to make the most of all of these tech opportunities so that we can fulfill two objectives that are very interesting. On the one hand, if all of these tools can serve an improvement of our democracy's quality and to institutionalize, so to speak, or increase institutional cooperation between administrations and citizens, then I welcome this technology. On the other hand, one of the big deficiencies that we've seen throughout all of the programs, debates and experts, workshops about participation, one of our weaknesses is a lack of interest on the part of the youth when it comes to any participation process that they can get involved in to improve their environment and their society. Why? Because they are missing the appropriate environment. If the metaverse can be used to make it appealing for the youth to participate and that will improve our societies through an increased participation of the youth, then I more than welcome this technology. Well, we can talk about many different topics, but I read many sources that say this is a cyberspace big bang. It's a quality jump that is huge because it's immersive. We will be within a huge realm, persistent, shared kingdom that will be a new dimension of reality, but also it's about becoming aware of our present, like yoga. It's like an altered state of your conscious mind. So what I want to say with this is that the metaverse works in the same way. It alters your state of mind. Sorry, allow me to interrupt for our listeners to understand this. We are joining this reality as avatars. You are the person with the sensors, becoming aware of your virtual self. So it's so much more immersive. Yes, of course. There'll be a therapeutical role for those who need to tell you, hey, remember to come down for lunch. And remember that milk comes from cows and goats, not from your fridge. We need to strike a balance. We were talking about 19 84, but also Aldo Huxley, human suffering will still be there. There'll be exploitation, there'll be pain. There will be shadows in the metaverse. So we need to be very aware so that public participation in the metaverse won't lead to domination and exploitation, but to happiness and engagement. We don't want to become digital slaves. Well, hopefully we will have a positive role within the metaverse. Let's conclude this interview with this sentence by Chaime about light and shadow in terms of possibilities for participation. Technology is always evolving. We've got WhatsApp, we've got a will to integrate our youth to get citizens to participate participation is always thinking about the concerns of citizens and how and where they live. So the metaverse will be an explosion of big data, will become a very immersive experience. So it's units and our city council's role and us as academia, we need to debate about the pros and cons so that we are better prepared so that we don't enter this reality being naive and understanding that we can govern these spaces and not the other way around and creating a democratic society where administrations help through the metaverse to increase, to boost participation. Shaime, thank you so much for this program, for sharing this space with us, for teaching us about the metaverse. Hopefully our avatars will meet in the metaverse very soon. I prefer the physical world. Why don't we meet face to face? I mean, avatars are fine, but 
I wouldn't mind going for lunch together for a good steak. Why don't we practice uh, sports in the metaverse and have lunch together in the real world? Thank you so much, uh, Marta. Thank you so much, Antonio. Bye. The metaverse can become a new dynamic for participation. That's what social work and social services professor Antonio López Peláez from UNED has said, together with Marta Lora Tamayo from Administrative Law and also Professor Chaime Marcuellos from University of Zaragoza talking about metaverse and public participation. It's a cyberspace where you can engage without the physical and economic limitations of the physical world. That is how we want to conclude this space, led by the Di Paso Innovative Teaching Group, who we would like to thank for their participation again. Join us shortly for another program. Thank you. Bye.